What do you know of podcasting? Nothing. To face a podcast without knowledge or skill brings only death. Of death I am knowledgeable. Danger I do not fear. And I can give you musical analysis. Musical analysis that will tame wild beasts, lift men's hearts to heaven. What is its name? The Going Off Podcast with the Rap Critic and Muse. What's going on, Muse? How what? the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, Darren. Uh, how, uh, how the hell are you doing? You know no one knows what the fuck is going on. Not yet. <laughs> we will make them know. We will make them wise to the ways. Dude, I thought last week we weren't going to be able to get two, diff- two more different albums than last week when we had... Hilltop Hoods and uh, and Green Day and last week we had the switch up. Last week you were requested the Green Day album and I was left with your boys Hilltop Hoods. This week I think they finally got it straight. Uh, mm. You got the oh, request. Oh, did they get it straight? Did they ever? I think uh, <laughs> you got requested Hermit and the Recluse and I got your boys Starbomb, the performing at the same time as our Magfest panel Starbomb. <laughs> So our, our sworn enemies, apparently. <laughs> our arch nemesis. Yes. <laughs> arch nemesis. <laughs> Calum Gubb, thank you for requesting uh, Orpheus versus the Sirens by Hermit and the Recluse. As I was listening, I was like, I know who this guy like sounds like. And I, was, and I realized it was Ka. It's like Master Killer, but, you know, like more slick and more refined. Like he just like slips all over the beat and shit. And that's totally present here, too. But it's like a whole album. I don't know. The <laughs> like whole that, thing. I was, I was like, it was starting to weigh on me. Like I, 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 like, I was listening to it. I'm just like, I like what he's doing. And this feels really epic. Like, this feels like like hip hop from, you know, if they like excavated from caves. Like, this is hip hop from, you know, 700 years ago. And, you know, it sounds like this really like, like, it just feels timeless. Like, it's just moving forward in this interest. Like, it just feels like sand is just involved in this production in some oh, way. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, someone had to pour sand and that was just like in the background somewhere. Like it's that type of shit. This is uh, an album taken very seriously because it fucking starts with an actual um, clip from uh, a TV movie of Jason and the Argonauts with fucking TV ass acting. <laughs> I was listening to this album and I thought you would have went one of uh, one of two ways on this. I'm just going to go ahead and say straight up that I enjoyed this album it's a very solid album it has it has points i like and points i don't like so much but i think most of it just comes down to preference for me like what you were saying before the flow is all right but the delivery is kind of mm. yeah i hate to use the word boring it's very monotonous yeah that's a, that's a better word for it it's just kind of like all right is nothing gonna pick up like ever it's almost like the lyrics of these songs were written down on ancient tomes and then someone just found them and read them and it's like there's all this you know warping like incredible lyricism you know what i'm saying like it, he's breathtaking the way this dude it's mf doomian the way this guy yeah. weaves mm-hmm. fucking words together but the production side of things it's just like you could have swapped half of these beats for the other half and like would it, you even be able to tell the difference you know what i mean they do a really good job picking out these looping samples that sound very like classical to psychedelic in range yeah yeah there's one of them that has psychedelic but it has that little needle scratch in it that sounds really like so it just feels in in just two different time zones you know the problem is it becomes very repetitive like they take a very small Snipplet and it just kind of repeats over the whole song and it doesn't switch up a lot so it's like you better fucking like this one little segment because you're going to be hearing it for the whole song and with what we're not just referencing we're not just naming the album after a specific thing there's Greek mythology references sprinkled throughout and what Ka tries to do and I- I'm going to say tries to do yeah, is relate these Greek stories to experiences in his own life, things he overcame and stuff like that. And that sounds ambitious as hell. And it is. But 
only sometimes does it actually click. A lot of the times it's like, I see what you're going for, but I'm not really seeing the relation. And that's what made it feel sort of hazy. You're presenting this and you're presenting this, but you're not really bringing them together. When we start out with Sirens and Fate, which I Which I, I did like, up- I really liked. I ended up giving those my lowest ratings on the album. I got it backwards because I was like, it started off so epic. And I was like, oh, shit, this is really cool. I really feel like I'm on, you know, riding the tides, you know, fucking we're going along on the, you know, back to, you know, 700 AD or whatever the fuck. Like, let's do it. And then after a while, I was just like, is it's going to be the the exact same really epic thing, the like the whole way through? You know, it's like a Marvel movie with just action scenes. You know what I mean? Like, it gets kind of boring after a while. I ended up getting almost a perfect bell curve where it started out kind of low, picked up, really hit a fucking apex right towards the middle, and then just kind of faded back out. But we'll get to that. Sirens. If you're familiar with the Greek mythology, it's these creatures that would distract captains of these ships and they would crash into rocks. Orpheus is supposed to sing so loud that he drowns out the songs of the siren. But what I thought was a really nice touch in Sirens, where I thought we were going to get more of, but it kind of diverted from that, was he's talking about all these hardships he's facing, and then he ends it with the line, We only watch out for the sirens. That could easily double for, like, police car sirens. Oh, uh, okay. So I was like, ooh, that's really fucking dope, actually, now that you did that. But it doesn't happen again. Only a couple times does he make it overt, like in the song Atlas, where he says, uh, weight of the world on my shoulders ain't drop it yet. It's like, okay. Yeah, see, that I was I see dope. what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Uh, Punishment of Sisyphus, all of that. But then there's other songs, like golden fleece where the whole song is talking about oh we're on the quest for the golden fleece but i don't know what you're talking about yeah, and it's like i'm assuming that's money i know this part of the song where he's talking about like i want food for the hungry I want, but it's like how are you doing all that shit yeah, that's what i mean it's just like okay you're saying this thing that's about aspiration but isn't this song about how we're trying to get money at all costs but that sounds like it's about being a good, righteous person. But I thought we were talking about you being a person who's just trying to get this money. And, and I just feel like these samples, they don't help. Like, I feel like like they're supposed to be giving it this air of like, doesn't this sound epic that these things are on here? But it's just like, it just sounds like silly and like History Channel remake show-ish. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I didn't think it made it sound epic. I think it made it sound like the silly type of epic, you know? I thought the music here helped set kind of a tone. I didn't think it really amplified too much, though. I agree with you there. Lyrically, I thought the first four were, you know, they were okay, but they didn't really do too much for me in the way of, like, memorable, hard-hitting lyrics. But then you got Argo. From bummy to 100, money sewn in pocket, flow aquatic, known alone for my slow hypnotic. Though some fault and throw salt kept a low systolic, toast with five holsters from live culture, probiotic. I was like, I thought that was pretty dope. And then the other part, my discretionary tales for some unnecessary, for some irrelevant. The people love me deeply because I speak the ugly elegant. True what I do, hood intel intelligent. Ain't bold enough to hold your goal, then air out your element. I was like, mmm, air, element, okay. <laughs> like, those types of shit he does, I was like, mmm. Fucking uh, monumental shit concerning wordplay. What's that one song where he talks about, um, this purity and obscurity, a glory that never bask, crave a savor in good times, showing signs that never last, coming to summon great, is how I undertake every task, relevant, global, my elements noble, they just heavy gas. I was like, ooh. <laughs> the buildup is great. Like, the whole, the whole time, it's like, ooh, he's going somewhere. Ooh, he's going somewhere. And then it fucking pays off at the end you're like there it is (laughs) i choose the op to excuse a lot just don't deceive me not all spoiled if the hard boiled never got over easy where it's clear it's never acceptable to take on jakes i am pressed to you become a vegetable or learn the steaks (laughs) 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 wait damn it he did it wait wait fucking had to do it (laughs) <laughs> fucking Sisyphus once again <laughs> I gotta quote another one he goes oh. 
He says, they come see, come saw. Want a world of superlatives, come yes. see Kai. Stay hopeful and broke through on my umpteenth try to warn you by being watched by the unseen eye. Off innovations, often mistaken as Orpheus. That man sing that he ran things, but he couldn't walk with us. Oh. I almost highlighted that too. <laughs> I remember that shit. Dude, if we're just doing this, I gotta highlight. <laughs> Do it. Just. <laughs> Because it's like, uh, like, let it, like, let it not be misunderstood. This guy's yeah, lyricism look, is absolutely off the fucking chain. Yeah, I, I feel like I dumped on it pretty hard early on, but fucking Golden Fleece, man. Few winners, fewer dinners. May attitude to feed us. Each night we keep fighting. Didn't matter if you beat us. No man problem for building. They'd rather you delete us. Seems the half of you hate us is the half of you that need us us yeah come on <laughs> one more <laughs> fucking hades a uh, thou won't proud there's mouths to feed essentially once empty bellies are full the house is greed between you and me every knock ain't opportunity i hate the maybes so wake the ladies and take the babies in case it's hades <laughs> Yes! <laughs> like, I, like, he does that shit, and you just, like, you just throw your hands up. You're just like... But then you got fucking on Hades. What the fuck is Citizen Cope doing there? What, the, the thing at the end? Yeah. It felt like... <laughs> that guy it, sounded terrible. It felt like they did one take and they didn't like it, but, like, they forgot that it was accidentally copied and pasted at the end of the track. Like, they forgot to erase it. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, I was impressed that Citizen Cope was able to sing two verses without moving his lips at all. <laughs> what the fuck was that, dude? But, um, but listening to this album, you know, I was thinking, and it was funny because I was like, yo, you know, this is a, you know, Wu affiliate. And what's interesting is like, I'll say this much, I like this album more than what Wu-Tang albums sound like these days. Yeah. You know, like this at least has this has a, a theme that you can follow if you want to. This has like this sounds like what hip hop should be evolving to in the underground, right? That sort of, you know, this is art hop now, you know, and now we're 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 talking about, you know, uh relating, you know, uh, art of the past to the present and but we're bringing it with, you know, urban gangster flavor, you know? <laughs> but like I like I'm joking, but like there's a really cool through line in it in that it's like, I mean, if you really read those stories, the struggles of the past are like the same as now because, you know, we're all human, you know? I mean, we're, we're using different um, um, mediums to tell our stories, but at the end of the day, it's just like there's the same, you know, types of people oppressing people, the same types of people getting oppressed, you know? It's like there's the same issues of inner turmoil, there's the same issues of love and all this sort of stuff. It's just like, yeah, of course, and I and I like that, and I hope we see more of it. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, yeah, I don't want it to seem like this is overly negative. I, I was just coming out the gate just kind of saying, like... As um, the way I took in the album was kind of like I was really enjoying the overly headiness at, at first because of course you know of course I, of course I would, but it's just like over after a while I'm just like, but would I show this to somebody? You know what I mean? Would I be like, hey, let's sit for a little over half an hour and listen to this? There are tracks I would, but not as a whole. Like uh, the songs I gave the highest ratings to Argo, Golden Fleece, Punishment of Sisyphus, and uh, Hades. Uh, Punishment of Sisyphus got my highest rating. Um, I thought that was solid. Um, and the beat was good on that one. I liked everything about that one. Um, but other ones are just kind of like grab bags where it's like either you've got a good beat or the lyrics aren't that good or or you got really dope lyrics or the beat's not that good. My favorite uh, beat was the Argo beat. Cause it was just mm. like it was it was like that ghost face killer just uh, on twelve reasons to die just like real simple you got the screeching violence in the back and just that simple two note bass the boom you know what I mean it was just like like it, that type of shit that just immediately gets you singing along with it you know overall I got a three and a half what did you get uh, I got a four I cannot deny the artistic you know incredibleness that is being brought here but at the same time I'm just like. 
but am I going to listen to this all the way through in the same way that I was listening to David Diggs's album, you know, where it's like the science fiction, you know what I mean? Like it's a story album oh, and there's a lot the to invest in, album, yeah. but there's so much musically going on that, and so much, you know, story-wise going on, you know, that, that it pulls you all the way through. You know, we go to different genres, we go to different, you know, tempos, you know what I mean? Like it, things really change up. This, you know, this has that very sort of like, like you said, pulled out of the sands of time, you know what I mean? And just like, just reading it as is, reading these ancient tomes, you know? And it's like, and yeah, you know, if you read the Odyssey, sure, it's not going to have the lyricism of an Eminem, but that's not the point, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I, but this does have the lyricism of an Eminem, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's like, but, you know, it's not going to have those beats that really like, you know, uh, that, that you're really going to remember as well, but, you know, that's not the point, you know what I mean? Now we transition into my request. Requested by Matthew Dolmage, Triforce by Starbomb. Yeah, the fucking tryhards over here. <laughs> Darren, I feel like you, uh, I feel like you gave a little spoiler there. Because it sounds like, now, 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 mm. correct me, correct me, please. Correct the wrong. If I am incorrect, but I'm getting the impression mm. that you didn't enjoy this very much. <laughs> not, not, not. Not as much as one should enjoy an album if they want to think it's good. This is a, a frustrating type of album because it does make me laugh at points. Like the very first thing that happened cracked me up. The first and last jokes on the album, it ended on a fart joke. It was fucking hilarious. Like it, it, it was classic type of humor. And they do have points that are like genuinely get like those, you know, those sniff laughs where you're like, oh shit, <laughs> you know, but there's so many other times where it's just like, all right, guys, this isn't funny. And your delivery isn't funny. And doing the white guy rapping like the beat. Point. Like it's played out, my dude. Like, like, yeah, that's what. Well, like when I saw the Beastie Boys thing, like that's fucking early new ground shit. Rapping like the fucking Beastie Boys, because oh, white guys rapping, what an insane thing! And like they do the white guy rapping thing where. They just shove as many syllables into it and do not think about how it flows with the rhyme, you know? And it's just like, could you guys please? <laughs> you know, it's like, I know it's supposed to be funny, but like even Weird Al makes sure that like, as well as getting the notes right, he also gets the rhythms right when he's writing certain, you know, things. Because it's like, you still have to be able to enjoy the song. Now I'm going to ask you this. Where does this land against a Dan Bull or against a... What was that one fucking album we listened to where it was like YouTube sketch comedy? Oh, well, the Dorm Tainment. I I, oh. I don't remember finding them funny at all. <laughs> God damn it. I almost forgot. Yeah, Dorm Tainment. Yeah, but where does this stand? Because actually, you know what? This is a uh, this is a good comparison because Dan Bull does video game humor. And that's what Starbomb is all about. Yeah, yeah, that's what this is all about, right? There's And the issue with this is, is like, I'm pretty sure... If you're into that specific game and mm. you know what I mean? And like you're watching the music video that they made for this or whatever. I'm sure yeah. it's very entertaining, but anywhere outside of that, it's not. That's a common thing in Ninja Sex Party and Starbomb is that I feel like they write these songs with videos in mind. There's a lot of visual things in Ninja Sex Party songs that if you're just listening to it, you don't know what was supposed to have happened, but then you're watching the video and it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But on the album, you don't know because there's no hint to that. And there's one song on this album in particular that I feel like that's what it's all about there because you're listening to it and it's like, I don't really know where the joke is. Donkey Kong Jr. He's just saying Donkey Kong in a weird voice. There's got to be more to that joke than that, because that on its own isn't funny. I enjoyed it in the sense of, like, the way it interrupted the verses. Especially the last verse, where it was just, like, not even two lines, and yeah. it just burst in, like, okay, that was good. <laughs> but it felt like nothing happened after that, because wasn't the point supposed to be, like, Mario's coming, and... And then, like, the guitar solo gets a whole bunch of, like, special effects. Why doesn't the part where, you know, yeah. Mario ransacking your shit, why doesn't that get anything? You know what I mean? Hardest fucking game in the world is a really weak track, in my opinion. That, that I absolutely did not enjoy it all, because, like, again, I don't know what this is. It was so, like, over the top. There's a few reasons I'm not a fan of this track. For one, uh, Aaron's voice is very annoying. 
in this song. He's doing the, like you said, the fucking over-the-top Beastie Boy delivery. It's like Lonely Island, but there aren't enough jokes to justify why it's this over-the-top. Yeah, I enjoy Dan's vocals a lot more on this one, but then again, he's also, like, a trained singer, so that would explain that. The way the, you know, when they do the syllables that are rushed and it seems like they're just putting out a bunch of dumb jokes, it feels kind of like fucking Key of Awesome, where it's just like, are you just trying to get these out as quickly as possible to, like, match the, you know, the height of the popularity of something? Because that's what it kind of sounds like. Because it's just like, we keep letting this game fucking antagonize. I will not let Dark Souls traumatize. It's just so, like, cornball You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, this game is like a thousand sharks biting my nuts. It's the spiky dick of Satan all up in my guts. Yeah, listen, I had a horrible time. Turned my penis to slime and pooped my pants at a random time. It's just so over the top that it's just like, this isn't, this is plain not funny. In the context of how over, overstated it is that Dark Souls is a hard game, like, if you're aware that when people refer to video games and they say, like, this game is hard, like, like they normally compare it to Dark Souls because Dark Souls has this reputation for being a really difficult game, but... The song itself doesn't really make too many references to the game. Exactly. It's really just a, like, lull to random list that's of That's what I mean. Things. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so someone who's into the game, it doesn't feel like there's anything there. Because it's like, I mean, I stole unmarked gold, melted down to fucking lava that I drank so I could fart gold. It, it ended up to having to eat charcoal, giving me some very sharp pain in my butthole. Do you eat charcoal in the game? Did I, I mean... Are the the fans out there chuckling their asses off? I mean... Now, here's the thing where I think it improves with uh, A Boy in His Boat, the second track. It's, like, a minute shorter. There is an issue of, like, yeah, get to the laughs quicker, get in and get out. As I looked up more about, like, Link, like, okay, that was a song where it actually became funnier the more I knew, especially with the way it ended, because it's like, oh, okay, now I know from the get what's going on. Mario Party 2, that was the one that someone showed me, and it's, again... Like, yeah, it just goes to the lull to random. Like, I actually know Mario. Okay, hit me with the references. And then you start talking about, this party's hotter than a club. Pikachu electrocuting players in the tub. Crash Bandicoot getting crunk on the juice. And I'm like, whoa, 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 Crash ba- I thought we were doing fucking Mario references. You know what I mean? Welcome to Mario Party as a song uh, was one of the stronger tracks. It definitely has one of the dopest fucking beats. But the problem is, it's more of that white boy rapping where it's just like... Guys, please actually write these beats down. Don't just go and uh, but, 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 like actually like plan these out because it can be an enjoyable crossover type of song. Like I really do think this beat was so fucking dope. Like when I first heard it, I was like, oh shit. And then they started rapping, <laughs> you know, and it was just like, damn, <laughs> you know, like I can imagine fucking Mega Ran lighting this shit up, you know, and fucking the Dream Daddy skit. Dude, seriously, fuck that skit. I don't like the skits. You're right. It's cute, but like, it's still an ad. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you're still yeah, annoying that's me. True. <laughs> like, you know, like. Hashtag ad. On the topic of skits or interludes, I didn't know if you were going to include this in your final rating. I was just going to mention that Aaron checks the mic. It's like a minute freestyle type track, and I don't know if you consider that a skit. Or its own yeah, its own song. I, yeah, I counted it. I also wasn't a fan of Vegeta's serenade, mainly because I actually like that one. <laughs> I really like. I just that thought one. it went on for way too long. <laughs> oh no! I thought I actually think that was was the best one because <laughs> it felt wow, like wow, holy shit! Music like it felt like the music was actually like you know going somewhere. There was a story. Like I actually knew a bit about Dragon Ball, so it's just like all right, I understand. You know what I mean? Like I'm like okay, I'm able to enjoy this the whole time, and even when it gets to the really obvious obvious end it's like it's still delivered so funny you know what i mean it earns it with how you know they're actually like doing a lot of shit with the story instead of like mario party where it's just like lol to random look at pikachu lol to random look at bulbasaur i just like the look at like those are the li- like <laughs> well, if those were the like, lyrics like- <laughs> lol look at crash lol <laughs> yeah like i mean if you wrote the song about mario if someone asked you to write a song about mario kart or mario would you ever think about including crash Band- like I'm someone who played Crash Bandicoot and I wouldn't have even thought about including Crash Bandicoot because it's just like that is not on that same play. I also wouldn't have thought about Bubsy either, you know. Like, 
Oh, yeah, that was the one avenue they didn't go down, the missed opportunity. But I gotta go back to what I, what I think is the strongest overall track is uh, filling in the name of, because it's short, it's to the point. Absolutely. It repeats the joke and builds upon it in a very, very funny way. In a way that joke songs work, you know? And for a fucking novelty song, I thought it rocked way harder than it had any merit to. Yes, actually. <laughs> It actually kind of parodies parts of Killing in the Name of, which I thought was a clever touch. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, listening back to the Doggy Cog song, I kind of liked it more than I thought I was going to. We had total inverse experiences with this album, I, I think. I was driving home and I was like, hi, my name <laughs> is Doggy Cog. Like, the melody got a fresh. If you just remove him from it. <laughs> and it was like, is, is it worth two minutes? Two minutes? Maybe one. Yeah. <laughs> it's an extra 60 seconds of waiting around for a joke. But, you know, the joke is funny. It's just, eh, I don't know if I'd, I'd go to a show. You know what I mean? And the wild guitar solo, there was just no joke. It was just, what if Pikachu whipped out a guitar and started playing? It was like, well, that's just dumb. Instead do of that. fighting. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's just not a funny premise because there's no, it's not based on anything other than, I guess, electric guitar oh i didn't even make that connection you know and then there's one that's part clever. at the beginning where he goes like it's me and that's catch him coming one more time first of all that's just a shitty for first lyric so you better have a yeah. better lyric coming next <laughs> you know but and then it's just a reference to the first album yeah and i didn't know what the fuck that meant because i was just like Wait, yeah did pikachu shock him and shoot him in the balls in the show what are you talking about like you know i was just I was just confused, you know? Uh, and, have, and when I listened back to that song, I was just like, oh, it makes sense. And this is also bad. <laughs> like, it was just, like, it wasn't like a, oh, I went back to the original and I really enjoyed it. It was just like, now I get it. But they also wasted an extra minute that they could have cut, shaved off from this goddamn song. The Pokemon song and the uh, Simple Plot song are both kind of, they come up on all three of the albums. Oh my, I'm sorry. That one, that song is just so basic in the setup where it's just like you know where it's going i know where it's going i fucking know where it's going and they have the fucking acting at the beginning where it's like this is a skit of the short plots of uh, video games remember keep it simple and i'm like already like okay i and just just i know how long the song is yeah exactly like (laughs) please just get to the point you know it's that type of like belaboring the joke And, and then the song itself it isn't even that funny, and it also just sounds like the A Boy in His Boat song when you get to that chorus. I, when I heard Blowing the Paler, I'm like, wait a minute, that's a that's a very Fucking recent Overwatch. game. Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did you think of that track, by the way? There was one part that actually, like, as someone who doesn't play that game and doesn't know that mm. much about it, is that what the game is? It's like uh, you, uh, someone gives you an objective. It's, it's a specific game type in these first-person shooters. It's almost like a capture the flag where... There's an object you okay, need to so, grab right, as the right. team. What they're saying, like when they have the people, you know, doing the voices of the of the the girls and the old lady, helping the old lady cross the street or taking the basket of lemons across the street, is basically like when they're pulling the payload across the across the video game map. Wait, so they don't actually help out an old lady in the game? No. It's equating it to everyday things. That's why when they go overboard and fucking blow shit up. That's the joke. That didn't really translate that well. That that they're used to like a battlefield and they're treating these everyday missions. No, it just just felt to me like, oh, is this what the game is like? Is it like that? See, Mm. like the the joke doesn't translate that well. (laughs) I guess not. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because I thought I thought it was kind of funny, like, oh, maybe it's like in the game there's an old lady and that's kind of a part of it. And they're just like e- extra personifying it as like instead of like actually being an old lady, it's just Danny sex bang. You're not even pretending to be an old lady. I thought that was funny. But if this is just that's not based on anything from the game, it's just kind of, oh. That kind of flattens the joke a little bit, but all right. You want the old lady so bad. Well, because that was the funniest part of the whole fucking song. (laughs) And I was like, oh, that's great. That really clues me in on what's going on in the game. And it's like, oh, all right, well, fucking never mind. All right, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's actively misinforming me in these games. (laughs) 
I was gonna, I was gonna buy a fucking Overwatch. Where the fuck do we meet the old lady? <laughs> you just like you're asking everybody in the game, "Where's the old lady?" So how do we, how do we get the old lady? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? What the hell are you talking about? You're, you're making us lose. <laughs> Where's the old lady? You're looking at the cover of the box. <laughs> Can I play as the old lady? <laughs> um, That's being stupid. <laughs> now, I assume... Oh, man. Uh, because cause you're not in the know so much, or you're not like a fan of them so much, that the meta track probably didn't land. Oh, this song sucks. That's about how we write songs badly. Well, see, the thing is, if they were funny, but since half the time they're not, it's just kind of like, yep, yeah, this is probably the type of song you would write. Yep. And oh my God, the most unfunny. And they ended it like, they did it like three times, ending like one of the verses with it. It's just like, Dude, it's not even funny in the ironic, it's not funny way. It's just not funny. The fucking, um, what about that thing like where you're on Yoshi's back and you're falling in a pit and you have to jump away and Yoshi falls and dies. It's really funny, okay? It's not funny. There is no, haha, <laughs> is it silly how it's just like, that just wasn't funny. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny, motherfucker. But then they end on a pretty good fart joke. <laughs> Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that actually made me laugh. And I don't, I don't want to give it away. I specifically want you to just hear the outro. I think it's clear to see that uh, I ended up enjoying this more than you did on a multitude of levels. I'm just gonna ask you first. Ooh, ooh, uh, I, I'd uh, give it a well. My rating was a one point six, so wow. I would round that down to a one and a half. No, okay. I got a four, so... Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you had a good time. Oh, I had a real oh, good time, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> As previously mentioned, uh, both of the requests this week were Patreon requests, so if there is an album that you would like to hear us talk about, whether it's a newer album or a personal favorite from years gone by, uh, hit us up on either of our Patreon, patreon.com slash ravcritic or patreon.com slash muse. Uh, check the pages out for details. Oh, and I'm also on my station at I'm uh, taking requests because we're going to be doing like a request show, you know, listening to, uh, you know, hip hop that other people are throwing at me. You know what I'm saying? Just little tracks. See, see if the people like it. And oh, and if I don't play a joint, don't be that guy. I, I thought it was whack. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me go on there and say it was whack. Just, just take the hint. <laughs> Just fucking take the L and move on. <laughs> uh, you can check out all of our old episodes on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Spotify being, I think, the easiest way to check out all of our episodes is to head on over on Spotify and just search Going Off Podcast. All the old episodes are on there. Uh, you can follow us on our respective Twitters, subscribe to our respective YouTubes, and until next week, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm the Rap Critic. And that weird-ass movie about Ryan Reynolds playing Pikachu is actually better than you thought it would be. It's at least better than Pokemon the first movie, but that, that's not really saying much, but you know. <laughs>